Andre, the so-called anthropic principle, which says that there are many universes, and the reason our universe looks so special is that unless it were special, we couldn't exist in order to ask that question. It sounds like it's just a circular reasoning, but it turns out to be a very profound probe of what reality is. And yet it's very controversial among physicists and some who say there's absolutely no experimental evidence ever for such a, a hypothesis and you're dealing with not just philosophy, but you may be even into theology. Well, um, both of these <laughs> sides have something right to say. Um, until approximately uh, 1982, well, I will say exactly, until the creation of inflationary cosmology, anthropic principle was something like, well, wishful thinking, I would say. Uh, because what we wanted, we wanted to say, oh, okay, we live in our universe and the properties of our universe are determined by our properties. But how could it be? First of all, there should be somebody who is sitting and creating one universe after another until, well, our uh, happy uh, state will, it will emerge. So why would somebody waste his, uh, well, time and talent for doing so? The second thing is that um, it is possible to save a lot of energy by creating just a piece of universe, like vicinity of our solar system, and then we will be happily living uh, there. Why would he need to create everything else around us? So these were two questions, and both of them have shown that the situation with the anthropic principle was unsatisfactory. Now, uh, with the invention of inflation, something happened. First of all, we learned that uh, if we create conditions in the vicinity of a solar system, conditions of a certain type, then inflation expanded for the whole observable part of the universe. So if you produce the conditions re uh, well required for our existence, then they everywhere inside. So there is no paradox that everywhere in the part of the universe which we see, the universe is uniform. That was one thing. And then the second one, why would anybody try to do this? Well, the possible answer is that the universe by itself does the job. Because if the universe is eternal, it self-reproduces all the time, and this is a feature of many inflationary models. Okay? If there are many different options in the theory of elementary particles, like in string theory, there are many different ways of creating the universe, then the inflationary universe, together with string theory, they are responsible for many, many tries where different parts of the universe are indeed in different states. So then the universe itself creates itself in all of its possible forms. So in order to do the one, which is to create even a solar system that yeah. allows our life, you, yeah. you, go, you have to go through the whole process that the universe it can do it itself. It is not that we have to, it just happens so that if you created one exponentially expanding piece of the universe, then this part recreates itself yeah, everything yeah. else yeah. that is possible. So you get so, everything else for free. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is all well, this example of uh, ultimate free lunch. Uh, you know, Alan Booth at some state uh, some time uh, told that our universe is the only example of a free lunch where you do not spend much, well, money or much more, much matter. You just from a small piece of matter, you can produce the whole universe. Comes to you essentially for free. Now, inflation produces not only our universe for free, it produces all different kinds of universes inside one. And, uh, well, my own continuation of this Alan uh, joke would be that the universe is not only a free lunch, but this is the only example of the free lunch where all possible dishes are served. So then you think, okay, then I have so many different parts of the universe, but I can live only in the part which is compatible with my existence. 
So that's all then. This is entropic principle. There is no mystic, nothing mystical about it. It just becomes a simple fact. Yes. So there is nothing disturbing, nothing necessarily pushing you towards a religion. If you are religious, that's fine. But if you do not want to say that somebody prepared it for you, okay, so that the universe prepared it for you. So there is nothing uh, theological in it. It's ki kind of opposite to, to it. Um, people nevertheless tend not to like it because our dream from the very beginning, the dream of every physicist, was to create a theory which explains in a unique way everything that it is around. So then if we say that it could be this and could be that, and it is because we are compatible only with something, well, it takes away some of our dream. It takes away our desire to get a unified explanation of everything. But then I think about it, and well, okay, so I was born in Russia. When I was born there, I was born in Moscow, and for a long time I was thinking why I was so lucky to be born in the best city in the world and the best country of the world. Then I start asking this question, oh, why I was born here? <laughs> anyway, so what happened now I'm living in the United States. And there is no need to climb that this one is much better than something else. Well, you can live here if you can. You can live there if you can. There is nothing wrong about it. Say, uh, you look at all these uh, objects around us. They are, uh, they exist, uh, their the, uh, well, construction is determined by electromagnetic theory. You just take one electromagnetic theory well, a little bit of theory of strong interactions. And you get all this multitude of different materials around. Mm -hmm. Why would you insist that only one of these materials is possible, that it is the best, that, okay, why our universe should be any simpler than this vast amount of materials, of <laughs> animals, of <coughs> biological substances, which we observe right now? If string theory has this amount of uh, stringy vacuum in which, uh, in, in which we can live, why would we insist that we live only in one? Well, maybe this is the case, but this is then the burden of proof should be on the uh, shoulders of those who want to have it. Uh, right now we have a simple possibility. We just want to find those vacuum states which are compatible with our existence. And this is a much simpler um, uh, task. So we save us some energy <laughs> by entropic principle without involving anything theological. The criticism of some physicists and philosophers is that you can have no evidence ever for the entropic principle. Um, I do not agree with that. And well, I should explain you the reason. Uh, well, we have experimental facts. One experimental fact, indeed, is that the electron mass is 2,000 times smaller than the proton mass. And then about this experimental fact, we do not still know why it is so light. But we know that if it were two times heavier or two times lighter, then the life as we know it would be impossible. Our life would just not exist. Yeah. Then you take proton and you check what is the mass of the proton and change the mass of a proton just a little, make it a little bit heavier than mass of the neutron. The structure of everything around us would be completely different and life as we know it would not exist. Let's talk about the energy of a vacuum, which is a tiny thing which was measured relatively recently. And then before it was measured, we thought maybe vacuum has zero energy. Now we know that it has tiny energy. The only explanation why it is tiny is that because if it were, say, tiny, but not so tiny and negative, then the universe would already have collapsed. And if it would be much larger and positive, then it would be, uh, the universe would so rapidly expand that it will tear apart the galaxies. So in all of these cases, with the electron mass, with the proton mass, with the uh, cosmological constant, with the, which is vacuum energy, the only explanation that we have right now of these uh, coupling constants is that if they would be much different, then our life would be impossible, okay? So this is called anthropic principle as we know, but then if the universe would not be a multiverse, then we would not have any choice, okay? And then all of these explanations would not work. So we have an experiment 
that if we change this coupling constant, we will, we will die. And we know this, exper this coupling constant experimentally. They look weird. And when they have the only explanation, and this only explanation is based on the theory of multiverse.